What is going on, Wolfpack Nation? It's the Wolf. We got another weekly trade recap video coming at you. Today's June 25th, 2022. All the execution charts you see in this video were executed via Centerpoint Securities, premium tools for sophisticated traders. We use them. We like them. We love the fails, the ACN rebates. Uh, use a direct market access broker if you're looking for a professional tool and grow your business. If you're interested in joining, we have a reduced commission structure link below. Promo code Wolfpack. Check it out. All right, first off, we have CEAD. It's 7 million float industrials name. A pretty thin asset. Prior to this liquidity event, stock only traded like 200,000 shares a day. Trash, you know, for what we want. We want high volume, high relative volume, high relative range, and volatility. So stock was trading like three normal days of volume per 60 seconds up here in this tier one area. We like to track volume. So it got inside like a 12 cent range. We got a feeler on some, some size, not much. Um, and then I was just kind of sick of watching it. We did note though that we were looking to see how it cleared out this 240 area here. We just missed it. It was fast. We didn't get it on. And then it faded without us. We just had a small piece. Uh, so there's no no need to trim and reload and get into a core rhythm here when we didn't have enough on. Low mental allocation. We just kind of uh, trim and trail technology on this one. So we normally trim off and trail risk down but again we didn't have enough size we did trail risk a few times here you can see we trailed to 226 and then we trailed again into 202 right in this crack here when we saw this prior support or tier two aggression right here at like 1130 targeting you know 177 um, next we have sym Micro float. Uh, it's kind of hard to get a, accurate data on this one. It's a financial services name, which is kind of like a red flag for me personally. And this was the fate of the week. Um, shout out to Centerpoint Securities for the borrow. Right, this stock was trading like it almost hit thirty dollars in pre-market, and we grabbed a point oh one eight borrow on it. Normally, I like to pay around one percent of the asset price for a borrow. But in this instance, uh, we were looking at like a tenth of a percent for the borrow. And again, it was the fade of the week. It went from 30 down to 15. And what a huge miss here. I mean, we got it. It was like a megaphone pattern, which we talk about in the Wolf Trading Server. But we just missed the fade. But the thing is, though, where do you like how do you where do you get in on this type of a fade or pull without chasing risk on? So uh, I'm not a big advocate of selling weakness. It's not in my toolbox yet. You know, comment down below. Where should I have gotten in? Ask us anything. You know, comments are welcome on this. And you can see we got flat 25.49. And man, was this a nice, nice fader. That was SYM on Tuesday. Next we have MULN. Now this is a little outside the niche. Uh, it's a 300 plus mil float auto. I think it's an EV name. And here's a snapshot from the room. You can see, look how thick this bid is. Uh, we posted this in the order flow room. But look how thick the uh, level two is here. This is something that we're, you know, we're not used to trading tickers this thick. We saw some nice range, got some risk on, it pulled, we trimmed, you know, popped. We got into a little bit of a core rhythm here. I don't think we got completely flat here. Uh, we wanted it to just kind of fade out. It was sideways. You can see, look at these candles, super sideways, thinning out, very small volume after 1030. But we held some, probably small, and then we just got flat in the after hours. Next up, we have LLL, 5 million float manufacturing name. Again, this was also on Wednesday. Uh, we had a pumper on it. We were watching that $2 level, see if it can hold a bid at two. If it can hold a bid at $2, I'm going to start to watch it. And I did start to watch it at two. And you can see here at 9.42, we reported, you know, it kind of feels like they want shorts to load up inside this $2 range and then just rip them. And that's kind of like what happened. And we were tracking the algo on this. And uh, we zoom in and we look at the micro chart and what's the behavior of the larger entity that's moving the asset. And we like to take screenshots of these images and we post them inside the Discord server. Uh, there's many of these examples inside of the room. Uh, he was only showing a you know, 10,000 share block, but it was relatively large for what was on the level two. Uh, I think there's an INET book. And so we got some risk on there alongside, alongside him, watching that supply soak. We got some more risk on, full position here, and then we're just watching it fade. It was pretty heavy. Even this was early to trim. I probably took it off psychological whole dollar number here at two, um, but it came back up. I thought this was too aggressive to get more risk back on, and then it just faded out. And uh, we just trim and trail. So we're protecting the upside and just trying to trim out. We had an upside risk trigger at 177, as you can see here. Next up, we have WKSP. WKSP is a 13 million float. It's an auto name. This was on Wednesday. 
Uh, just a mental note, this company only has 11 employees. That's kind of a red flag, but when there's not much on radar, you know, we like to participate in the market. So we're just looking for plays, probably a low grade setup here, especially for how thin it was. Again, thin and trappy. And but we had a high conviction that we we're going to see more downside, not really liking the fundamentals on this company or anything that really would get anybody excited, in my opinion. So we just kind of built a position, watching it, letting it confirm. And you can see here, like around 10 o'clock when it just we watched this soak here and we watched the bid soak here. I kind of made a comment that they need to get the book right before they pull it, meaning that, um, that whoever's painting this chart, the, the liquidity for them to to get out of the position has to be there first we were kind of quick to take profit here because it was kind of higher low higher low higher low and i just wanted to get some risk off in case it did swipe again i didn't want to stop out like 250s you know holding this all day so i wanted to pay myself like 50 percent which we did and then i took the remainder off you can see here flat at 213 and here's some of the comments from the room so bhat look at this like the dead sea all day long nothing and then after our catalyst boop it comes up i had a nice day here today as you can see a lot of a lot of tickers we traded bhat was also on wednesday so this is the third trade that we posted so i was just in a good groove and i wanted to take it a little aggressive here got some risk on instead of stopping out right here at this 160s a low price asset um, so we just try to build a position sub two but we were quick to take profit and then reload and then trim. And this was a miss here at 160. But I think it was really thinning out. Like when the volume's really thin or it's relatively just, it's not there after hours, uh, you know, I'm more lean toward risk off as opposed to risk on. BZ is a 215 million float, kind of outside the niche, and it's a staffing service. So, staffing service, I'm interested. How many employees do they have themselves? They have 4,840 employees. So, okay, I'm like, all right, I'm looking at it. It was very thin in pre-market, but again, this was this one was Friday. Not too much going on in pre-market on Friday. The super thin, I remember this being ultra thin, like probably shouldn't even have traded this one, but I got in and my target was 26.50s, I think, and we just didn't get it. Kind of came up watching it, just wanted to get out. So nice little trade there. Now we have WRAP again, this was also Friday. Uh, this was a 28 million float technology company. And I think it had something to do with the road versus way decision. Again, I'm not particularly positive. I don't like to get married to these stocks. I just watch the momentum. We watch volume. And uh, we have our systematic approach to these. But as far as fundamental goes, we really don't dive deep into them. We just try to get in and get out int intraday length. Um, we got a nice little average here versus high day. I think our average was like 332. And, um, you know, risk on this trade was a 350 sustained bid, meaning if it can get up above 350 and that starts to soak or hold on the microstructure shelf, we'll just take it off. Um, again, we, we didn't. So maybe it was like 15, 20 cents of risk on this trade, theoretical minus slippage. And we started taking profit like around three. So we took a little off at like 1.25 to 1 RR. Then we took some more off at like 2 to 1. And then I just I saved a piece for a OCO order. Basically, an OCO is just a single order. One cancels the other. So on the top side of the stock market, um, if you're in a short position, it could be in the money risk or wherever you set it. And the bottom is generally a limit to, to fill flat. And that's what I did. Um, so reanalyzing re risk in real time, um, reported in the money risk trail at 292 and fade target 236, sit on hands. Set on hands, meaning the operator does not push any buttons. And that's really usually best case scenario is you already have the trade. The RR is already set. Just sit on your damn hands. And that's what we did. We got a low side fill. We triggered 236 flat. Nice trade here. And last we have TBLT. TBLT was uh, a nano float 1 million. Uh, I thought it was 1 million. I had incorrect data. Somebody in the room reported, hey, hey Wolf, this is a 4 million float. And I did, we took a quick little look and this was kind of a quick, look at the market cap, super small here, but you can see this is a good, good one to go through the process. S1 on 513, amendment, amendment, final amendment on 616. Then we see the effect right away. These guys aren't wasting any time. Effect on 617 right here. And then boom, the prospective supplement comes out 621. And then they hit it with the 8K pricing right here. So this is like a, a rapid process, uh, not to go into the filings, but they need money. And it looks like they got it.
So we we're a little bit early or aggressive on this one, just throwing feelers out. Now, again, when you scale the front side, at the end of the day, all triangles aren't created equal. These, these are not equal. This is not an equal sizing structure. You generally, when you front side scale, all that matters at the end of the day is where's your average versus your risk, right? You want to have your average as high or as tight to risk as possible. And sometimes we get emotional and we get some feelers, 5%, 5%, 10%. But generally, we try to get 50, 60, 70% of the size closest to risk. We want to we want to prop that average up tight on a $4 stock. We, we don't want our average to be more than 20 cents away from our risk. That just doesn't, I, mean, like, I don't want to have a 40 cent uh, one to one on the target, uh, you know, it's just not conducive to a low price asset like this. So we took some off, added some back heavy, raise the average, come back backside, add trimming, trimming, trimming. And these are the areas you can see here that we're watching, we're watching this 30 minute soft test right here. And then we're also watching the, the, the prop right here at 350. 350 was a higher time frame level. You can see it was tested once in pre-market. And then there's a lot of volume at this 350 level. It's a decision point. The information is into this 350 agro versus soak data reported that at 1014 into this level here's a micro tape spot on the upside these are levels that we report to our subscribers where we believe there to be more of an organic tape this is where we want to watch motive from the larger player uh, you just don't want to stare at tape all day long and get a brain freeze i think the target was like 236 like a fantasy fade we didn't get it and then i started to watch it i came back from the gym and i just took it off 295 flat so that was, uh, that was a pretty good trade there as well. All right, guys, that wraps up week 25 trade recaps. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something. Don't be afraid to uh, comment below. If you see something that I could be doing better, comment. If you see something that you like, comment. If you just want to talk some shit, comment. <laughs> Say whatever you want. We respond to every single comment. So thanks a lot. Now moving over to the Wolf Trading Discord server. This is where the magic happens, baby. Let's take a look at the technical room. Uh, some things that we didn't go over during the recap. Here's Sega. Sega, what? This is a recovery push entry here into the 260s. We go over the recovery push as an entry uh, setup. Here's PETZ. So we posted this in the morning using the runner's room. Here's every single time that PETZ had an after hour or pre-market extended hour move we track it so we just pull them up pop them in the room in the runner's room show me p-e-t-z there might be 10 15 entries we call the runner's room aka the weapons room here's rev these are levels of interest that we posted at like 9 30 in the morning here's how those levels came in later on in the day we're talking about recovery push right here we're looking at that multi-day tier structure Right, we're looking at the tier one point of control here at 758. This is these are levels that we're interested in watching tape. Now this one did crack this prior tier one and went into our 840 decision point. ETZ did reverse at 850, and I remember that because I posted the 850 supply from the ARCA book. Uh, there was a player there talking about liquidity zones, tier structures. This is just a technical room. Here's the runner's room where we have a log. This is basically a searchable index all the way to February 20th, 2019, like uh, PETZ in runners PETZ. So every time PETZ ran, it's going to come up here and you can see there's 10 results. 10 results. We have a nice little searchable index here. Here's the Wolf Coaching Room where we house hundreds and hundreds of hours of our video content. And don't forget to get that weekly dose of motivation, baby. <laughs> Hopefully that motivated you to join the team. Check out the description below. You want to have a great and fantastic weekend. Take care. You made it all the way to the end of the video. You must have really enjoyed it. We're so glad to have you on board. Please feel free to like, comment, share these videos, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. There's much, much more to come. Happy trading, be smart, and stay safe.